When we gaze up at the night sky, it seems as though the moon is changing shape before our very eyes. One night, it might be a thin, silvery sliver, while the next it could be a bright, round orb. But here's the thing, the moon isn't changing at all. We understand that it's our view of it that's shifting. Have you ever wondered how the moon phases got their names? Let's delve into this lunar mystery. Picture this, the moon, the earth, and the sun are engaged in an eternal cosmic dance. As the moon orbits around the earth and the earth around the sun, we see different amounts of the moon's surface lit by the sun. This is due to the angle at which the sunlight reaches the moon, and subsequently, how much of its illuminated side is visible from earth. Now, these shifts in the moon's appearance aren't random. They follow a predictable cycle, a lunar cycle to be exact, which lasts about 28 days, mirroring the moon's orbit around the Earth. And it's within this cycle that we encounter the eight distinct phases of the moon, starting with the new moon, where the moon is positioned between the Earth and the Sun, and we see no moon at all. Then, as the moon moves in its orbit, a small, illuminated sliver appears, marking the waxing crescent phase. This sliver grows larger into the first quarter, then into a waxing gibbous, until we reach the full moon. The moon then begins to shrink into a waning gibbous, then to the last quarter, and finally into a waning crescent, before returning to the new moon phase, and the cycle begins anew. Each of these phases presents a unique view of the moon, offering us a different slice of lunar beauty every night. And while we may not consciously register these shifts, they're an integral part of our relationship with the night sky, and these different views of the moon are what we call its phases. So the next time you look up at the moon, remember, you're witnessing a celestial ballet that has been unfolding for billions of years. So, what are these phases and how did they earn their unique names? Let's delve into the celestial journey of our closest cosmic neighbor, the moon. The moon's phases are the various shapes of the illuminated part of the moon as seen from Earth. There are eight distinct phases, each with a name that echoes its appearance and position in the lunar cycle. The journey begins with the new moon, invisible to us. As the moon lies between the Earth and the Sun, its dark side facing us. The term new moon signifies the start of a new lunar cycle, much like a new beginning. As the moon orbits Earth, a sliver of light begins to appear. This phase is the waxing crescent. Waxing means growing, and crescent refers to the moon's curved shape, similar to a slice of a ripe melon. The first quarter isn't about time, but about the moon's appearance. It's the halfway point between the new moon and full moon, where half of the moon's face is illuminated. The term quarter refers to the moon being a quarter of the way through its monthly cycle. Following the first quarter, the moon continues to wax into the waxing gibbous phase. Gibbous, from the Latin word hump, refers to the moon's humped appearance as it swells beyond half illumination, but is not yet full. The full moon, the most iconic phase, occurs when the moon is fully illuminated, creating a stunning spectacle in the night sky. The moon then begins to shrink or wane into the waning gibbous phase. It's still more than half illuminated, but less than full. The last quarter mirrors the first quarter, but this time it's the other half of the moon that's illuminated. It's the moon's final quarter in its journey around Earth. Finally, we arrive at the waning crescent, the final phase. The moon's illumination has decreased to a slender crescent once again, but this time it's on the verge of becoming a new moon. Each phase has its story to tell, and now you know them. Let's delve deeper into each phase, starting with the new moon. As the name suggests, the new moon signals the commencement of a fresh lunar cycle. But what exactly happens during this phase? In the new moon phase, our celestial partner aligns itself between the Earth and the Sun. This positioning results in the side of the moon that's illuminated by the Sun being away from us, meaning we can't see it from Earth. It's as if the moon has decided to play a cosmic game of hide-and-seek with us. But why new? Well, it's all about beginnings. The moon's journey around the Earth begins anew, a fresh cycle starts, and hence, the term, new moon. It's like the moon's very own reset button, preparing itself for another round of its lunar voyage. 
So don't be tricked by the darkness in the sky. When you see no moon, you're actually witnessing a new moon. But what does waxing and waning mean in the context of the moon exactly? Well, let's demystify these terms. You might be surprised to find out that these words have been used for centuries to describe the moon's ever-changing shape in our night sky. Waxing is an old English term that means growing or increasing, and it's used to describe the moon at times when it appears to be growing larger. After the new moon, the visible part starts to increase, and this phase is what we call waxing. During this phase, the moon is on a journey from a slender silver of light, known as the waxing crescent, to a half-lit orb, the first quarter. It continues to grow until it reaches the waxing gibbous phase, where it's more than half lit but not quite a full moon yet. On the other hand, waning is another Old English term, and it means decreasing or shrinking. So after the moon reaches its full glory, it begins to shrink. This is the waning phase. The moon goes from a waning gibbous, still more than half lit but shrinking each night, to the last quarter, where only half the moon is visible. It continues to shrink to a waning crescent, until it disappears completely, becoming a new moon once again. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? The moon, our closest celestial neighbor, going through this endless cycle of waxing and waning, it's a beautiful dance that's been happening for billions of years, a dance we're lucky enough to witness each and every night. These terms, waxing and waning, not only describe the moon's phases, but they also help us understand the ebb and flow of life itself. Growth and decline, increase and decrease, these are natural cycles we see all around us, from the changing of the seasons to the rising and setting of the sun. So next time when you see the moon growing or shrinking, you know it's either waxing or waning or the full moon. A sight to behold, isn't it? This celestial spectacle occurs when our moon is situated directly opposite the sun, allowing its entire disk to be illuminated. It's a breathtaking display of the moon in its most resplendent form. But why do we call it a full moon, you might wonder? Well, the term full signifies completeness or entirety. As the moon travels its elliptical path around our planet, there are times when we can only see a portion of it. However, during a full moon, we're privy to the moon's entire face, a fully illuminated disk, hence the name full moon. This phase also marks the midpoint of the lunar cycle. Just as a story reaches its climax in the middle, the lunar tale also reaches its zenith during the full moon. It's a time of culmination, a peak in the moon's monthly journey. So, a full moon is when the moon shows its full face to us. Last but not least, the quarter moons. But why quarter when we see half of the moon? Let's uncover the mystery behind the first and last quarters. When we look up at the moon in these phases, we see exactly half of it illuminated. So, why do we call them quarters? The answer lies in the moon's rotation and its position in relation to the Earth and the Sun during these phases. Think of the moon's journey around Earth as a circle. This circle can be divided into four equally spaced points. The new moon, the first quarter, the full moon, and the last quarter. When we say quarter, we're not referring to the fraction of the moon that's visible, but rather the moon's position in its orbit around the Earth. The first quarter, also known as the half moon, is when the moon is one quarter of the way around the Earth from the new moon phase. The right half of the moon is illuminated and the left half is in shadow. The moon rises at noon and sets at midnight, so you can see this phase in the afternoon and evening. The last quarter, or the third quarter, is when the moon has moved another quarter of the way around the Earth, three quarters of the way into its orbit. This time, the left half of the moon is illuminated and the right half is in shadow. The moon rises at midnight and sets at noon, so you can see this phase in the early morning and late night. The quarter moons are a time of transition. They stand at the midpoints between the new and full moons, serving as reminders of the constant ebb and flow of life. They represent balance, a perfect split between light and dark, a moment of pause before the cycle continues. So it turns out, the quarter moons are not about the visible fraction of the moon, but its position in its orbit around the Earth. It's a matter of perspective. 
From Earth it may seem like half a moon but from a cosmic point of view it's just the moon, one quarter of the way through its journey. So it's all about perspective when it comes to the quarter moons. If you have reached this point in our video, a huge thank you is in order. If you learned something, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you for watching.